I pupu mai ai te wai i te take o mau kātere. Wau! Mau a whakaruru hau o tū a huriri takatā. Ki te awa a rakahuri, tona pūtaha, pai kā huru ki te tai o mahanui e. Rita tonu ana ki te waka tawhito, a māu i tiki tiki a tā raka. Greetings and salutations. Mihi ati kia koto i tēnei wā. Kia koho ki rā, a Mark. Tona kai whakaheire. Nā te iwi a kura kura kai tahu kati mā moe me waita anō. A koto rā, te hoki tēnā hoki koe e jiri. Ko koe rā, te mini tā. Or earthquake city, nor either ten or nothing. This is an auspicious occasion. Thank you for the opportunity of offering our not only our welcome but also a blessing upon this occasion. Anorera kia tau te rangi mariko hawai te roko kia ako tahi ai tatu katoa me huri aha me tari ko te kaka. Now we're going to do a little bit something that we weren't going to plan, Jerry. Me and my nephew here, probably another nephew over there. We're going to do a very shortened version of, of a haka that, that um, talks about the earthquake god. Way more. Ha ha! Wengaruru nei! Yahu! Oh! 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 Can I uh, thank you for being here? Can I acknowledge uh, my Associate Minister, Amy Adams? Can I acknowledge uh, the Honourable Leanne Dalzell, uh, Dame Margaret from ECAN, Dame Margaret Baisley from ECAN, uh, Mark Solomon from Naitahu, uh, Kelvin Coe from Selwyn, uh, David Ayres from Waimakariri. Uh, those of you who are here from uh, Cancern, those of you who are here from uh, the Community Forum, uh, we very much appreciate your being here today. Today is not uh, necessarily a big occasion, but it is an important one uh, because it marks a, a new direction or a, a confirmation of a direction after what has been 21 difficult months uh, for the province and for the city. So just recapping a little bit from 22nd of February 2011, uh, where we had that state of emergency, uh, there was a lot of things that uh, had to be done at that time, and there was a, an all hands to the pump exercise, and I, I think it will never be possible to fully acknowledge some of the work that was done in those immediate weeks after that event. On the 29th of March, the Prime Minister announced uh, an intention to establish Sarah uh, to lead the transition from the state of emergency into the state of recovery and then on uh, to a fuller recovery over the uh, five years ahead at that time. The 18th of April, the Earthquake Recovery Act uh, was uh, given its royal assent and the organisation came into being. It wasn't until the 13th of June, though, that Roger Sutton was appointed or took up the position of Chief Executive having been appointed uh, some time before that. And it was sort of poignant that on the day that Roger started uh, we had yet another big earthquake that was a little bit of a setback as well. So from the very beginning uh, he's had quite a lot on his plate. The um, draft recovery strategy that we're releasing today was first published uh, in September of 2011 and since that time it's had a lot of input uh, from a range of groups and I'm grateful for those people who've taken time to have a look at it 
uh, to make their recommendations and I'm pretty sure in most cases those recommendations are reflected in the new document. So while we come today to the strategy point, uh, strategy document uh, that'll give us some guidance going forward, uh, it does come after a, a considerable amount of activity that's been going on and you've only got to look out of these windows uh, to see uh, that happening. First I, I'd just like to recount that uh, we did establish pretty quickly in October of last year, and when I say we, I, I do speak collectively about governance because a lot of people were involved in these things. Uh, the establishment of the Project Management Office, which undertook 45,946 emergency repairs to people's homes, uh, it put in 15,000 winter heat appliances or repaired some appliances. There are over nearly, nearly 10,000 heat pumps, for example, installed uh, prior to June of last year. Uh, 15,500 homes under that system have now been fully repaired and signed off and 2,000 homes are being repaired in the Greater Christchurch area under that system on any given day at the moment with 13,500 contractors employed to do that work uh, and 600 million paid out so far to those contractors. EQC as you know is dealing with uh, 6,880 exposures uh, about uh, 400,000 individual claims or thereabouts. No insurance company or single insurance uh, provider in the world has ever dealt with anything so big from one incident. They have so far paid out $3.1 billion uh, with obviously a lot more to come. Private insurers have paid out $4.6 billion. And the ongoing land assessment, the red and green categories, which I know have been very difficult for people, uh, have taken quite a bit of exercise uh, by a very large number of people out in the field um, and that's left 5,000 people now having accepted one of the government's offers uh, with others an off having an offer in front of them uh, to consider uh, sometime in the near future. That means over 600 million has been paid out in settlement on properties and a further 39 million has been paid out in deposits for people who accepted one of the options but need a little more time to get their final position sorted. The technical categories 1, 2 and 3 developed uh, by the Department of Building and Housing uh, have been put in place to try and get some guidance uh, for stronger foundations for those who are making repairs or building new. And it really does just uh, uh, acknowledge the sort of land conditions that we've had here in Christchurch for a very long time uh, but probably haven't mitigated against worst effect of. And the idea of TC3 is that in the event of a big earthquake a building wouldn't suffer any greater damage than a property on TC1. Changes to the regional policy statement have also been made and that's been facilitated uh, through the uh, process of uh, orders and council which has been a very cooperative process uh, entered into with the right spirit by uh, all parties in Parliament and I'm grateful for that. It has ensured that as many as 26,000 new sections can be provided uh, in the near future with at least 2,000 on stream uh, over and above what was expected by mid-2013. The establishment of the Stronger Christchurch Infrastructure Rebuild Team I think has been one of the quiet successes uh, that uh, we can celebrate. It will deliver over $500 million of work annually for the next five years. $40 million worth of work, of work each month will be invoiced and paid uh, from about the middle of this year. 120 to 150 work sites will be established or operating across Christchurch at any one time and that the uh, skirt will have a, a workforce of some 200, sorry, 2,500 workers uh, for most of that period. We've only got to look out the windows to see what has happened uh, in the demolition sense and it's hard for people I think to grasp sometimes exactly where they're standing in the city because there's been so much lost. 1,199 buildings demolished to date with up to 1,500 buildings expected to be demolished uh, or partially demolished before there is a, a full opening of the cordon. There are some good signs. There have been uh, building consents with a commercial value in excess of a million dollars each uh, at around 65.9 million in the last two months. We'd hope that we see similar results uh, in the um, residential area. So there has been a, a terrific amount happening, but from here, there needs to be the strong guidance that uh, will ensure a, a better recovery that the, the recovery strategy can provide. It sets out 
the way forward for the rebuilding of a greater Christchurch. It provides direction to those who have a role in recovery and activities, coordinates those recovery activities, sets out some shared principles and goals and a common vis vision, gives the community confidence that recovery is well planned and progressing, and takes every opportunity to restore, renew, revitalise and enhance Greater Christchurch. The tragedy strategy, should say, also outlines the governance arrangements for ongoing collaboration with local government, Naitahu, and the funding approach and the commitment to monitoring. The Canterbury Earthquake Recovery Th uh, Act uh, defines recovery as including both restoration and enhancement. Recovery is frequently future focused and we all need to find and take opportunities to build back better when repairing damage caused by the earthquakes. Opportunities for enhancements should be considered including where they lead to increased resilience and or functionality or are cost effective according to life cycle uh, analysis. This is provided they don't come at the expense of repair or replacement of essential infrastructure and services elsewhere. For the purposes of this strategy, recovery does not mean returning Greater Christchurch to how it was on September 3, 2010. It needs to be better. The strategy's approach to recovery will guide and coordinate the work of all central government agencies involved in recovery activities and the strategic partners, the four councils and Naitahu. Only sections three to eight of this document are the statutory recovery strategy. The rest of the document provides additional information. It covers the context for the strategy, governance arrangements, financial and funding issues, and the programs of work through which the strategy will be implemented. Supporting the vision are the six goals of relating to uh, the components of recovery. These are first, leadership and integration, this covers research and information, communication, funding and finance, and the governance coordination and project management of recovery activities. Economic recovery, investment, business, labour and insurance liaison. Social recovery, this is education, health, community support services and other activities that make communities worth living in. Cultural recovery, the arts, culture, heritage buildings and places and sports and recreation the built environment, land use, housing, buildings, transport and infrastructure, and the natural environment, our quality air, biodiversity, the coast, land, groundwater, and surface water, and natural hazards. All these components link together and should be read through this document as a whole. For successful recovery, there has to be leadership and integration across these components with the community at the centre of all decisions. Sarah has worked across government with strategic partners to develop programs to implement the recovery strategy. These programs deal with each of the six components of recovery and are interconnected. They include activities, projects and larger programs of work and will seek to achieve the multiple goals where appropriate. Recovery programs will be implemented by a number of, uh, in a number of ways. For example, some agencies will coordinate with each other on new initiatives and will reorientate and adapt their usual business practice to make them work. Some programs may use statutory tools provided by the Canterbury Earthquake Recovery Act, such as recovery plans and orders in council, or other acts such as the Resource Management Act and the Local Government Act. Government-led recovery programs, in fact all recovery program, programs, need to be consistent with the recovery strategy, particularly the goals and principles. Those are integrate activities to achieve multiple goals, of the recovery strategy where possible. Investigate opportunities for risk reduction and enhancement to build a stronger, more resilient community and region. Uh, use appropriate impact assessment methodologies and tools. Identify program targets and objectives and identify pre-earthquake baselines and expectations for the components of recovery, social, economic, natural environment, cultural and built environment. These baselines can then be used when measuring the success of recovery programs. That is the, the formal statement about what the recovery strategy does. What the strategy can never do though is uh, point to the goodwill that's going to be required here in Canterbury for a very long time moving forward. Uh, coupled along with I think a high degree of excitement about the sort of place we can be in the future. There are some incredibly bright things on the horizon. If you think back to uh, the days uh, after February 
all sorts of pessimistic predictions were around about the future of Canterbury, about the possibility for uh, communities to continue living here, etc. I think we've been able to minimise the worst effects, and you know, if it is a reasonable measure of commitment to the province, uh, the recent statistics showing uh, extraordinary economic growth here in difficult times over the last short while, uh, I think indicates that we've got a great future ahead of us and that we can see that cooperation uh, coming to fruition in uh, a plan for this part of the world that will be very, very bright indeed. I want to thank uh, Ricky uh, and your friends for your blessing today. I very much appreciate that as, a, as uh, we all do the ongoing commitment to this part of the world from Aitahu, which is in the circumstances uh, quite understandable. Uh, and I also want to thank the Christchurch Press for making this facility available. Uh, it is uh, you know, quite breathtaking actually to see how much empty space exists around us uh, and to note just what a big task we have in front of us. Uh, but I'm sure that uh, with a bit of, uh, as I say, goodwill and commitment uh, in a few years' time, this will be a very vibrant city indeed. Thank you. Um, as the Minister said, uh, I started this job sort of a fortnight short of a year ago um, on June the 13th when we had another one of those little shakes. Um, and Sarah's changed a lot since then. Um, we've grown. I think we've got a real culture of can do, get out there and make things happen. Um, and I think we're also coming to see that Christchurch is not going back to where we've come from. We're going to go back to something better, something more improved than it was before. I think we're already seeing a lot of those signs already. Um, some of those things, it's the government and local government that are brought together. Things like the, um, the, the rugby stadium down in Addington, um, Cashel Mall or something, if you like, largely private enterprise brought together. But also I think about the fact that the, the community got some real things going. If you think about the gap filler projects we see around town, um, if we think about things like the court theatre, we've seen the community really getting their act together and bringing things together to make the city better than it was. So what does recovery mean? Um, and I guess next to that is what, is, what is a city? And I think in some ways, what is a city is in some ways a much harder question to answer. For me, um, the new city is going to be a city which does have a vibrant, exciting CBD. Um, it's a city perhaps where we have a, you know, a walkway, as, as Andrew said, all the way through the river from here, um, down near Regent Street. But it's a city also where we can ride our bikes more easily and get around. I think transport is going to be one of the key things we have to make sure really, really works. And that's really what the strategy is about. It's trying to make sure all those things come together so it's a much better integrated city than it was before. But it's, um, I think the recovery strategy is really about a year of trying to bring together all the different players. Um, this recovery strategy was brought together by, and it wasn't, it's, not, it's very much a document which has got the authorship of ourselves, but also the local government players, the business community, a large number of NGOs, um, but also the wider community have had a real input to it as well. So I think while it's got the Sarah name, of it, name on it, it's very much a document which the wider community can own and feel that we can go forward with. Um, I encourage you to read the document. Um, it's about, if we, we've got piles here somewhere, haven't we? Where are they? There's a pile of them down the back there. So it's a document which I think you should all read, take home tonight, um, and not watch Desperate, House Rive, D Desperate Housewives, but, re but re re read it instead. Um, we look forward to your f further engagement. Thank you.